who, like an old dog, becomes more cantankerous when treated well. Besides all of us. <laughs> Wait until you hear what the answer is. <laughs> huh? Mm, you're close. He who fills with pride when shown respect by others. Okay, who, like an old dog, becomes more cantankerous when treated well. He who fills with pride when shown respect by others. Okay. So somebody who's very attached to uh, receiving respect and regard and laps it up and, you know, their pride increases and then they become more cantankerous because they think they're really somebody big and somebody worthwhile and the world should wait on them. Yeah, so then they, uh, you know, are like this and waiting for people to do something and scolding people and, you know, they're really difficult to get along with because uh, they have taken the pride uh, with self-grasping and thinking that there's a real self that, that all that pride refers to, okay? Uh, whereas somebody who is wise in the Dharma, the more they are praised, the more humble they become because they realize that praise has nothing to do with the person who is praised and it has everything to do with the person who is doing the praising. Because the person who is doing the praising has a very virtuous mind. They see somebody's good qualities, they remark on that, they want to share that, they feel joyful, yeah? The person who's being praised, if you're wise, you know, you say, you realize that, you know, it's somebody else's virtuous mind you just happen to be the person they're projecting this onto. Yeah. Sometimes the praise may be helpful to, you know, give you some feedback that, that you need if something's going well. But by and large, you know, the more we receive praise, the more we should realize that the praise is not about us. Because it's not like we came out of the womb, you know, as some big know-it-all completely filled with good qualities. You know, if somebody's praising us for our knowledge, it's due to the kindness of our teachers who taught us. If somebody is praising us for our looks, it's due to the kindness of our parents and grandparents. If somebody's, you know, praising us for skills we have, again, it's due to, you know, people who taught us and encouraged us, okay? So the praise that we receive is not really about us. It really should go to all the other people who helped us. Yeah? And so a wise person, when they're being praised, especially if, if you're in the Dharma, then you, you know, recall the Buddha at your heart, and you think that that person is, is praising the Buddha. Yeah? Because it, it really, you know, doesn't have much to do with you at all. And especially if you contemplate, uh, you know, ask yourself, who is the person who's being praised? Yeah, what, what are you going to find? Where's this big me that appears to be the most perfect one in the world? What or who is it? Where are you going to find it? When you search for it, what do you find? You find a body and you find a mind. Is our body praiseworthy? It's filled with junk. Is our mind praiseworthy? It's very often filled with garbage. So <laughs> if somebody happens to be praising us, you know, it's really got to be that there's no, first of all, there's no real I there to be praised. But second of all, even, you know, the parts of the self, the, the basis of designation on the self, you know, we're, we're ordinary beings. So what's there to praise? So in this way, we, we keep ourselves humble and free of pride. 
And when we're free of pride, then we can learn much better. Yeah, because we're open and receptive. When, you know, we're full of ourselves and uh, we think that we're really, you know, the best Dharma student or the best this and that, who has the most potential, who's going to be the most pr successful, who's going to change the world with everything wonderful we have to contribute to it. You know, if we have that view of ourselves, life is going to really knock us around, isn't it? Yeah? Because not everybody's going to see us that way. And it, first of all. Second of all, if we, you know, are succeeding in all of our big things, it doesn't just depend on us. It depends on other people, and we can't control them. Yeah? So it's just much better to be humble and be low-key rather than to be ostentatious and arrogant and here I am for the world to worship. You know? That's not going to go very far. <laughs> right, and it pollutes any good you're doing because you may be doing something good, but as soon as you get egotistical and arrogant about it, you know, your motivation changes and, and becomes quite polluted. And so the good action you were doing before becomes yeah, the burnout of the proud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this doesn't mean we develop low self-esteem. Yeah, that's not the point. Humility and low self-esteem are quite different. And uh, when we have uh, self-confidence, we can have humility. Yeah. When we have pride, then when our pride gets deflated, we flip to low self-esteem. So both of those are pretty extreme. Yeah. Sometimes it's very difficult to recognize pride. You know, especially if you've um, excelled in a certain system you know, like the school system or your work office system or your sports system, whatever system you were, did, you know, if you did well in that and a lot of people praised you and patted you, your back, then it's very easy to begin to think that you're really hot stuff, you know, without realizing that it all came from other people and the kindness of other people. So the pride can be very difficult to recognize. What are indicators for identifying pride? When, um, when you think that the world owes you something, yeah? When you think that if only everybody followed your advice and did things your way, that then the problems would be solved. Um, if only buddy, you know, other people should listen to all my ideas and obey all my instructions because they're mine and I always know best. You know, or people should always put me at the front of whatever it is and notice me and comment about how wonderful I am. So if you have those kind of thoughts, then that's pretty indicative of pride, I would say. Yeah, it, could, it can flip the other way into, you know, I'm the most terrible at one in the world. That's also a form of pride. And then there's another form of pride that is we get pride by association. So it's like, I'm not so good, but my boss is really fantastic. You know, I don't know so much, but I'm the student of this really high lama, you know? And so you try to inflate yourself through being associated with somebody else who has more prestige. That's also a form of pride. Yeah. yeah, the body posture, tone of voice, how you put your arms, all of this can change very much with when somebody gets proud. And they've also uh, done studies that people with a lot of pride, it's very hard for them to have empathy for other people who haven't had the same circumstances as they have. Yeah. So you're saying, just if somebody comes and says to you, to you, are you a proud person, you would probably say no. 
you know. But, um, <laughs> but then, you know, when you find your pride being peaked, picked, peaked, pricked, you know, then you see this kind of come up, you know, and that's going to happen more on the daily small basis thing. Yet when somebody praises us, we need to rejoice at their virtuous state of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you're being praised, you aren't really benefiting. Yeah. And you could be being harmed, you know, if your pride gets, you know, inflated. Whereas the person who can see the good qualities of others, you know, they have a very good mental state. And it's really lovely to see that, you know, when people have that very positive mental state. Oh, yeah, there's a big difference between praise and flattery. Yeah, praise you give because, like you say, you want to give somebody some good feedback and help their confidence. Flattery is when we're trying to get something out of somebody else. 